PowerSchool allows teachers to build online quizzes that grade themselves and export scores straight to your gradebook. There are two types of modes that a quiz can have, and once you create your quiz with one mode, there is no switching over to the other. So it's really important for us to understand the differences and when to use each. To get a good sense of that, I've got two actual quizzes here that I'm going to take right now. This is in a real class. I'm logged in as a student. You can call me Junior or Sample. Not really sure which one is my first name. Let's start out with practice mode. So I click here. It tells me when the cl uh, quiz closes, what it's worth, gives me some instructions. Let's get started by clicking start this practice. Enter the number two. I type one and I click OK right here. And what's about to happen? Look at this. I immediately see that I got it wrong and I can even view a hint. Don't enter one and don't enter three. Hmm, maybe I should enter two. Then I click OK and I get a green check indicating that I am correct. Where are the other questions? Where are the options? Well, to see question two, you have to click on this text right here. And now it's options, it's answer choices appear. What is the greatest NFL team? Uh, Cleveland Browns. Okay. Whoops, I think you misread the question. It's asking for the best, not the worst. Oh, the best team, New England Patriots. Okay. Correct. A green check, I got it right. Match each LMS with the appropriate descriptor. Power School. I never really knew what that was. Schoology, fun. Haiku, crying. Click OK. Oh, I got them all wrong. OK, let me try again. Uh, power School, fun. Schoology, I never knew it, really knew what that was. Haiku, crying. And I click OK. And I'm out of options. I cannot attempt anymore. There's no further, because my teacher said you can only do each question twice. But I could still see I got power school correctly linked with fun but these I mixed up okay I can click OK to move on um, okay number four hmm if I get this wrong power school will give me another attempt true or false well if I get it wrong all of these I had a second attempt that's what my teacher allowed so I'm gonna uh, mark this true and I click OK Oh no, it's false. Why don't I get a second attempt? What's wrong with my reasoning? Here's what PowerSchool is doing. There is only one other answer choice. And so if students don't get it right the first time, they immediately know the, sec uh, the correct answer the second time. So if there's only one remaining correct answer um, and there's no skill involved, PowerSchool will not give credit. Okay. So let's click on I've finished. Are you ready to submit? Yes, okay. So that's practice mode. Students can immediately see the correct answer. You can give them the choice to try a question a second time, a third time, even if they get it wrong on the first attempt. And look at that, look at my score. Because some of these questions I got correct on the second attempt, I get half a point in that instance instead of a full point. Um, so the other thing you can do with practice mode, you can immediately, no matter how soon or how late you finish the quiz, you can immediately click on the attempt, view the questions again, you can see the correct and incorrect answers. Uh, all of that is immediately accessible. Now here's the other thing. If this quiz hadn't closed just a few minutes ago, I could continue making additional attempts. I could try again and PowerSchool will automatically send my highest score over to the gradebook. Um, or you can have PowerSchool send the average score of all the attempts. So that's practice mode. And if I, if I go into my you know, gradebook as a student, I will see this score in my gradebook immediately, and you, the teacher, will see it in your score sheet immediately, as long as you link this quiz from class pages over to your gradebook and I'll show you how to do that linking. Uh, it's the same as assignments. So that's practice mode. Now let's look at exam mode. I'll click on this quiz, 
it brings up a new page with the quiz. I click uh, resume. It looks like I started it already. And okay, I've entered some random questions, some random answers. If I click here, I can choose an answer. I can move through the questions. And you see what happens when I, if I go to here and I click OK, it automatically moves me to the next question without telling me whether I was right or wrong. There's a check, yeah, but that doesn't mean I'm right because it's not green. Uh, the check mark here in this case simply means I've answered the question. So then when I'm finished, I click I've finished, I click OK. Notice that I automatically see my score but I cannot click to view the attempt. So there's no way for me to know what I got right and what I got wrong. This score is transferred immediately to the gradebook, um, but I can't go see the questions again. Okay, when can I see those questions? I see them when the exam closes. So you have to make sure that your close date is far enough in advance that all of those absent students and all the other blocks who have to take it, make sure that they get a chance to take it before the close date. Uh, because after the close date, everybody sees what they got right and wrong and they can go tell their friends who haven't taken the quiz. Uh, okay, so that's how exam mode works. You don't see anything until the close date except for your score. Now let's see what it looks like on the teacher end to build these quizzes. If I click add content block, and so I'm in my page, right? I'm in my class pages. I can click on add content block. Then I click on the far right tab and I click assessment. I have to create a new uh, assessment. I don't have one yet to load into one of the blocks. Uh, so let me click on this button, new assessment. And I will be creating it sort of in a database. Oh, look at this which mode well let me do practice and then click next i cannot change that back from one to the other okay practice title not real video quiz i can choose the number of points it can save to the gradebook once it is published so let me click next and here are some settings how many minutes do students have to finish? How many times can they attempt it? Unfortunately, there's no unlimited option. Do you want to use their best score or do you want to uncheck, in which case the average score goes to the gradebook? Uh, let's see, max incorrect attempts. How many times can, times can students continue trying the question over and over until uh, they are forced to receive zero, zero, zero points? So I'll say they can try it twice, they can get it wrong twice before they're forced to move to the next question. Here you can say, okay, look, if they don't get it right the first time, yeah, they should be able to try again, but don't give them points. This second choice, by contrast, says, well, you know, if you get it right the second time, you get half a point instead of a full point. Okay. Randomize questions, randomize multiple choice answers. And then content mode protected blocks students from some access to other websites. They can't go look up, you know, the definition of displacement when the question asks, state the definition of displacement. So let me click save. I click on add question. I can choose the style and it's a pretty straightforward process. If I click on multiple choice, I can type the question stem here. You can type answer choice A, A ball, A bat, A puck, A stick. And then you click this dot on the side to say this is the right answer. If they choose a wrong answer, you can click right here on hint and choose a hint for students to uh, view and see before moving to the next question or before trying their same question again. So what's the hint? Um, it can fly. Oh, 
There was one on the third floor bathroom a couple days ago. That was exciting. Let me click save. Uh, you can do that for each of the incorrect choices. You can add more choices. Don't worry about section. Everything goes into section one. We won't really be creating different sections. Um, don't worry about weight unless you want this to count for more than one point. This is how many points the question counts for. Save and from here we can view the question. Uh, when it comes time to go publish this question, let me show you how I like to do that. I go back to my pages, so I click here on pages. Then I add a content block. So I click on add content block. I click on the far right tab. I choose assessment. I'm adding a block and hey, there's the assessment I just built. Let me tap this, click on this. And that's what will go inside my new content block. You can choose the open date and the close date. You can click also save in gradebook. Uh, you can provide restricted access where they have to use a password, but this really won't make sense for us in, in any scenarios. So then I click finish. And there it is. This practice isn't published. Let me click the publish button. Hmm, what's wrong? Well, oh, should publish. Let's see if I click finish. Okay, so I just have to click it and then click finish again. Right, it, it has been published. Uh, video quiz. What if I'm creating assessment? What if I'm creating an exam? Here's the trick with exam. practice quiz. When you create an exam and you go to publish it, right? You have to make sure your close date is far, far in the future. So I'm just going to create a random question here. Type three. The correct answer is three. I could add possible weight, possible correct answers, but I'll just click save for now. Okay, there it is. The other way you can publish this is by clicking on manage, and then you can click publish. All right, you can choose to also save. You can pick a particular page. This is all going into the not real page. All right, this is where it's important. Now. I don't know when every student will finally make up this quiz, right? But I need to make sure to make it, uh, you know, a couple months out because if my, if my quiz closes too soon and one person hasn't taken the quiz, then now everybody will see the correct answers and I don't want that. So I'm going to put this really far in advance, way farther than, than I would actually want it to be. And then I click save or finish. Okay, it has been published. Let me go to my class page and see if I can find it there. So I click on pages, not real, and let's see. Practice quiz, there it is. That's the one I just added. And it shows exam, that's exam mode. So uh, once everybody has taken this quiz, you know, maybe it takes a day, maybe it takes three days, maybe it takes two weeks for everybody to make it up. Once it's finished, everyone has taken it, you can make it available or open by changing the close date. And you, you know, you click here and you click edit, or you can simply double click in the block. And okay, everyone has finally taken it. I'm ready for it to open up right now. So I'm gonna put some date in the past. All right? Put these both on the 23rd. And I just add some date from the past. I click Save. And immediately, students will be able to go view the submissions and see what they got wrong. So that's how to think about the quizzes. Um, use practice mode whenever you want students to get immediate feedback. Use exam mode whenever you want to hold off and avoid showing students the correct answer till everybody has taken it. 
And again, the important thing with exam mode, when you first create the exam mode quiz, set the close date far in the future. Then, once everyone has taken it, and you've confirmed that by looking at your roster, looking at the submissions, once it's finished, you can go edit the close date and set it to some date in the past in order to make it immediately visible to students. Okay, that's a lot, but thanks for watching this video.